Hello YouTube, this is Peck Tech. And the question that I receive the most often on my page has to do with CO2. So I thought it'd be a great uh, idea to do a show all about CO2. Now, I don't use CO2 in my tanks, or I used to, but I don't right now. Uh, the, everything that you're seeing in my aquariums these days is done completely without CO2. I go for a really basic, simple method that uh, doesn't require it. I mean, most of my lights aren't bright enough to really justify adding all those extra nutrients into the water. But I've got a brand new project going involving this tank behind me here. And uh, I wanted to build my first like really high tech tank. Uh, and I'll tell you more about that later. But for now, uh, I'd like to show you all the CO2 products I have tried before and some I haven't. And just give you an idea of all the things that are available to you. So let's take a look. Starting here on the end, uh, you see that you can bypass the whole build a kit or buy a very expensive uh, kit and just add chemicals. These are also not very cheap. Uh, here we have Florist Excel and uh, Natural Aquarium Vital uh, brands of a liquid CO2 that you can add to your aquarium. Uh, I've heard that these work really well. I used this uh, when I started the 56 gallon upstairs, but only for, I don't know, four or five months. And then I just stopped using it. Actually, <laughs> this thing's stuck. I can't get it off. But anyway, um, I, you have to remember to add these, which I think is a disadvantage. I, I much prefer something automatic, something that uh, I don't have to think about every day. Uh, again, keeping it as simple as possible. Really, I want to feed the fish and change the water and occasionally do plants. Uh, that means that my plants grow very slowly. Uh, I don't go for like super growth or that sort of thing. And that's what you get with CO2. Now, if you're not adding liquid CO2 to your water, then most likely you're using uh, some sort of fermentation to get the CO2 in, or you're using a pressurized system. So, this was my first attempt at a DIY CO2 uh, dispenser, and it worked. Actually, it worked too well. I didn't, uh, I didn't follow the directions very carefully, and I, I miss, I put too much uh, yeast in, I think, and <laughs> it actually nearly dosed my tank. The only reason that I even was able to tell what was going on was besides the behavior of the fish which you should check every day, you know, just to make sure that everything's right, was I had a CO2 meter. Now, the way these work, uh, you pour a little bit of this liquid that reacts, um, that reacts with the water. So, uh, if you dispense this in, it creates a little bubble inside, and it can, uh, it can tell how much CO2 is in the water, and it'll change colors, and then you check it on a checker. So, that's... That's one way to tell how, you know, at what level your CO2 is. Um, but anyway, so I made it, you can make one of these DIY CO2 dispensers pretty easily. Uh, you need about a liter jug, at least. Uh, a lot of people recommend to use a filter. And the way this works, basically, is uh, one hose goes from here down into some water. And the other hose is just right at the cap. Now, what I did for these is I used airline couplers and I pushed them through and then attached the hose to that and it made a pretty nice tight seal. Uh, I just attached this to the side just to kind of keep it uh, more manageable. Then this would run up into a diffuser. Now there are all kinds of diffusers. There's really neat, neat glass ones that just look very cool inside of the aquarium. This is the one I used before. I have a new one on order but uh, I usually buy them from Asia so it takes a long time for them to get here and they haven't arrived yet and I didn't want to wait to make the video so I'm doing it now. So this one's pretty old and used but it's a neat a neat little uh, vessel. It, a lot of them include a bubble counter. That's kind of how you tell how much CO2 is coming into the aquarium is with a bubble counter of some sort. So you can count I think one bubble per minute is uh, sort of the optimal but that might be a little low. It, it just depends on how big the aquarium is. I mean you don't you need a lot of CO2 to uh, take care of a 125 gallon aquarium and just very, very little for a 10 gallon. So there you go. Uh, if you don't feel like making your own, 
Another option is you can purchase kits. Uh, I think this is made by Hagen or Fluval, and it's what it basically is is the exact same thing but without a filter. You'll notice, and you uh, you've got the they come with little premix packets, so you have just a precise amount. So if you don't like thinking about those sort of things, uh, this might be for you. It's got little fill lines, and it comes with little packets. It's a, a Nutrifin CO2 system. <sighs> Packets basically include yeast and um, baking soda. And the baking soda is sort of, uh, it keeps the effect more consistent over a long period of time. The yeast and the sugar uh, ferment and they create pressure inside here, which makes the small bubbles that you see that come out. The object of, the, of getting the bubbles into the aquarium is to make them stay there for as long a period of time as possible. So you'll have a well, like airstone type rock in the, type, in the tops of some of these diffusers to make the bubbles really small so there's more of them and more surface area to dispense the CO2 as it leaves. And you've got little devices like this that just try to keep the bubbles in the aquarium for as long a period of time as possible as it runs through here. Um, I, this was a, probably worked okay but it was really enormous and I switched to a couple of these. I've actually broken two of them. This is the only one I had left from my first attempt at CO2. Um, again, these have to be maintained uh, probably every week. Uh, it's actually been, it's been maybe three or four years since I've used this stuff. So uh, I think it was like a weekly or monthly change and uh, it's really important that you do that. You'll see that the pressure will drop off, but you get an inconsistent amount of CO2 with any DIY. I mean, it, if you're really on it and you're changing it every week, you can probably get a lot of consistency. Uh, uh, but I would think I really lean towards something more automated. So I'll tell you about that in a second. Anyway, another option you have is this cool little kit that I found at, um, on eBay. And all it is, is basically it's the DIY system, but they've done all the work for the caps for you. So you've got caps here that go on two liter bottles. And it's got a check valve. And it's got a little meter here on top so you can actually see how your pressure is. So that's pretty neat. That's a neat little product. And uh, I might try that out just to see what it's like. It's also very inexpensive. Of course, not as inexpensive as that, but still. Another option, uh, as we move into the pressurized CO2 things, this is the kit, this is out of the Fluval Flora kit. Um, this, kind of, this is a pressurized CO2 cartridge. It's still attached because I had a problem with the, um, the diffuser here. And mainly, I took this off, you can see that they're They've obviously, one's been used and one hasn't. So these come apart. Anyway, these come apart and I would just put one in and I filled it up, you know, I'd fill it up at the t beginning of work and, you know, by the end of the day it was pretty much gone or there'd be a little bit left in there. So, and then the next day I do the same and the flora actually did great. I mean, this worked perfectly but I had a problem, uh, as you know, the Fluval Flora has that uh, backing on it. So you had to stick this on the side. I still think that these are kind of big and ugly things in the aquarium that you have to hide with plants. Uh, of course, the CO2 makes that much easier. But uh, eventually, the you know these suckers kind of wore out and then it would just ride up and it wouldn't stay attached. I had a big problem keeping this thing attached. So I've purchased, a replacement uh, again on eBay and it's basically the same device but it fits in a corner and it's got four suction cups I think that it's got just as much as if I had the entire thing in it's really not any prettier at all but I do like now that the backs come off of my fluval flora and it's just glass through there I can attach this right there in the back corner and it will keep everything nice and pretty inside <laughs> So this is the inexpensive way to do pressurized CO2. Uh, one of these cartridges in a small, uh, almost eight gallon tank like the Flora will go about a month. And I've found that um, they'll seem to go a lot longer than that, especially 
if you only have half the vessel, that's the other reason. I really wanted to conserve these. They're not cheap. Um, they're not terribly expensive, but they're not cheap either. Fluval also makes a larger version of this that you can use as more of a consistent CO2 where you just kind of leave it on throughout the day. Uh, this, you fill it up and then you let the CO2 just kind of, disp you know, it mixes with the water down here until it's all dissolved inside of the aquarium and nothing bubbles out. Anyway, it also comes with this little clip so you can attach that little CO2 canister to the back of the aquarium. That's pretty neat. Now, the system that I'm going to use for my project is a um, made by Milwaukee and it's going to use a pressurized CO2 canister and this regulator here. This is probably, this is the priciest of the options for using CO2. Um, this will attach to a tank. This is a bubble counter we talked about before. You, uh, it becomes very necessary to, to uh, count the bubbles in this because it's gonna be completely automated. Uh, it has what's called a solenoid here at the bottom that will cut off the um, CO2 that leaves, the, leaves through here. And uh, when certain parameters are reached, and we'll talk about that in a second. But what it basically, what this is, is it, it attaches to your canister. It has a meter that measures the amount in the canister and a meter that measures the amount coming out. And uh, this bubble counter, a lot of places will put sort of this uh, fluid inside here that's not really water, I guess probably so it won't get all gooey, but it's, uh, uh, I don't know, some sort of oil or something is what it looks like. It looks like kitchen oil actually inside of there. And the CO2 tube will come out and it go inside the aquarium and then more than likely I'll use a glass diffuser like this, which hasn't arrived, but I'll be sure to show you when it does. Now, how am I going to keep the solenoid uh, in check so it's on when I want it to be on? Well, there are a couple of options. You can use a light timer. It's just an electrical plug and uh, basically works just like a light timer does. But I also picked up along with this kit a pH meter. Adding CO2 to the water uh, changes the pH in a very dramatic way. So you can use a pH meter to determine exactly when uh, your, your CO2 is at the proper setting. Now to measure the pH, I, I purchased this controller along with the regulator here. And the controller uses this probe that will fit in the aquarium someplace. And it will shut off the flow of oxygen by uh, cutting off the power to this outlet here. So I plug this into the outlet and when the certain parameters for the pH level are reached inside of this by the, uh, and determined by this meter, um, it will actually shut off the flow of gas. So this will be a completely automated system and all I'll have to do is replace the CO2 however often uh, uh, it takes to to run through its cycle. Now I'm putting this on a comparatively small aquarium. Uh, I'm going to use this 27 gallon behind me. So I'm guessing that maybe I won't have to change the CO2 very often, but I will have to calibrate this meter uh, ever so often. It comes with calibration fluid. Uh, this is the probe here. So I imagine you just, uh, it has some sort of some directions on the back. So you mix this up. Uh, you put it in the water, it becomes a very specific pH, and you use that to calibrate uh, your pH level. And that'll make this a very accurate meter. It'll make it, um, and that's very important. Too much CO2, you can actually poison your fish. Um, it'd be, I guess, the equivalent of running the, your car in the garage with the door closed. So, uh, you'll see the the fish will be at the surface gasping for air. Uh, one fish in my aquarium actually turned white. One of my rubby nose tetras just turned completely white. And uh, uh, he's been fine ever since, but it was just, is really unusual, really unusual and bizarre. 
That's why it's very important, I'm gonna stress again, it's very important to get your mix correct. There are a number of videos on the internet that uh, have the mix, the precise mixes that they've recommended. I'm gonna post my, my recipe right here. Uh, I get my recipe out of the Simple Guide for Planted Aquariums, which was written by a couple of people that I think are really, did a really great job. It's a, it's a terrific book. It's the book I read when I started doing Planted Aquariums and I recommend it for you too. So uh, that's CO2 in a nutshell. That's basically covers a lot of the products and kind of gets you an idea of where you'd like to start. Again, the simplest is probably the liquid uh, liquid additives. You move on to some like home brew, you know, do DIY, do it yourself options. You've got, you know, small pressurized CO2 or huge pressurized CO2 with computers and controllers to turn it off and on. So there's a lot of options in CO2. Uh, of course, uh, the difference in price between, you know, a DIY or these things and, and this sort of thing are just out of, you know, out of the roof. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly cheap to make your own DIY system. So if you want to experiment with it, that's where I'd start. And uh, if you like the results or you need the results for a specific plan or to get the, even to get the pH to a specific, specific level in the tank, it might help you with discus and other things that go along that would look great with your plants, right? So, <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of reasons to use CO2 and uh, I hope this video helped you out. Have a great day.